this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. And he said unto me, You must prophesy again. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Trumpet Daily. Are you prepared for what's ahead over the last several months uh, here at thetrumpet.com or with these Trumpet Dailies on my father's program, The Key of David? We've been talking about quite a few heavy subjects, prophecies that are being fulfilled. And how do you react to that? What is your res response to some of these heavy prophecies that have to play out before Jesus Christ returns to this earth? Are you inclined to just kind of hunker down and hope that it will pass over? Or do you go about trying to store up large quantities of physical necessities? Some people are inclined to do that. Let's look at Revelation 1, the book of Revelation, this book that contains so many prophecies for our day today, the book of Revelation. God's challenge to each one of us is to put our trust and our confidence in Him in times of trial and test. When things become very urgent or difficult, man tends to trust in himself or maybe some other human being. Think about the way God supernaturally provided for the Israelites for 40 years. They were out there in the wilderness. They didn't have really anything to speak of in terms of physical sustenance. And the God provided for them to teach them, as it says in Deuteronomy 8, that, that man shall not live by bread, physical bread alone, but by every word, every word of God. We'll look at that uh, later, the, the passage from the New Testament, the parallel. Here in Revelation 1 and verse 3, it says, Blessed is he that reads, uh, it says, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Blessed are you, this verse says, if you read, if you study this book. How blessed are you? Perhaps we should ask first that question. How blessed are you as you sit here today watching this program, this video? Are you blessed by God? Step back from that and ask, how blessed is your nation? Is your nation being blessed by God? Is your nation receiving the blessings of God? Because if not, well, can you make a connection to this particular verse? Do we want to be blessed? Here, as I say, this is a, the, one of the very first few verses of this this greatest prophetic book in the Bible, the book God means for us to understand and to know. For so many people, the book of Revelation is, is confusing and they don't understand it. But God reveals the truth through His Word, not just with prophecy, but the truth about how we ought to live, where we should turn, when times get very, very difficult. Prophecy, of course, is a significant chunk of the Bible, about a third of it. And much of it is for our day today. And God says we can understand, we can know, and we can be blessed. If we'll read, if we'll hear, if we'll study, if we'll dig in to God's Word. Look at the trend even in our society uh, for, forget about the Bible. I mean, people that just don't have an interest anymore in reading the news or keeping up with world events or even reading good books. Nicholas Carr in his book, uh, Shallows, he talks about just how you can look at the, the library, the local library, as it is today compared to 15, 20 years ago and see what a dramatic change has taken place I'll give you a few quotes later of his book. I want to give you one more here at the start that I don't have on a slide. Um, in any event, he writes in his book, The Shallows, until recently the public library was an oasis of bookish tranquility 
where people searched through shelves of neatly arranged volumes or sat in carols to read quietly. Today's library is very different. Internet access is rapidly becoming its most popular service. You can go into the library and see these dramatic changes taking place. Brad McDonald quoted from Mr. Carr's book a few years ago at thetrumpet.com, a lesson from the library. He said, according to American, uh, the American Library Association, 99% of the U.S. public library branches provide internet access. The average branch has 11 public computers. More than three quarters of public libraries offer Wi-Fi networks so patrons using personal laptops can access uh, the internet. And some would say, well, that's because there's so much information on the internet, and there is. But then as Mr. Carr points out in his book, if you just look at the average screen at the library, people go in there to update their social media pages or to surf the net, whatever it might be. I was recently at a bookstore, Barnes & Noble, with my daughter, and it's the same, the same development, really. That store is quite a lot different than it was 15, 20 years ago when it was just mo mainly books. Today, of course, there's all sorts of things. Let's look at that verse I mentioned in, in Matthew. It's uh, stated in Deuteronomy 8 with respect to the Israelites and how God provided them uh, bread from heaven miraculously to feed them, to feed them in the wilderness. And God wants to do the same for us uh, spiritually, Matthew 4, here in uh, verse 4, it says, But he answered and said, and, and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is how Jesus responded to Satan's attack here in Matthew 4. He says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I mean, this is how we really get to know God. By learning His every word. By living by every word. You've got to learn it first, study it first, and then be a doer of those words, as the Bible says in so many different places. The book of James, uh, Paul talked about it in Romans. Jesus himself talked about those who just heard his instructions but didn't do them. We've got to follow through on these words of life. Notice this proverb. It says, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. See, it leads to happiness. It leads to blessings, as Revelation 1.3 says. Blessed is the man who studies, who reads this inspired word. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. Wisdom and understanding bring happiness, but you have to go and, and find it. You have to search after it. One of the, the very first things that we remind our incoming students, those that are accepted to Armstrong College, is how much they need to learn, how much they don't know, how much they need the Word of God as the foundation to their education, Let's look at 1 Timothy, Paul's epistle to his, his uh, assistant, Timothy, the evangelist. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6, Paul says, If you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto you have attained. See, put... Put the brethren in remembrance of these things, Paul says. And he talks about the words of faith that nourish us, that strengthen us. That's what the words of God are meant to do. Now, and that's why they're likened to, to food or to manna, as you can see in John 6. There's a direct comparison there between what God gave to the Israelites, as explained in Deuteronomy 8, and what he gives to us spiritually. And in the same way that you wouldn't go through a day without eating unless you were fasting to draw closer to God, but apart from that, you get hungry daily, more than once a day, and you feed on physical food. 
And that's the way God wants us to be with spiritual food. He wants us to understand that if we go without spiritual food, we're going to be malnourished. We're going to suffer. We're going to get sickly. And so God wants to feed us. Verse 13, a little further down here, says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Give attendance to these things. Do it daily, as we'll see in a second here with the uh, example of the Bereans. Until I arrive, make sure you do your part, Timothy, and really plow through the scriptures. Really dig into God's word. Let me take you to Mr. Carr's book, uh, The Shallows, to just tie in here the trend in our society today, which is moving away from uh, reading and, and study. He says most Americans, no matter what their age, spend at least eight and a half hours a day looking at television, a, com a computer monitor, or the screen of a phone. He says frequently they use two or even all three of these devices simultaneously. <laughs> what, does, uh, what does seem to be decreasing as net use grows is the time we spend reading print publications, particularly newspapers and magazines, but also books. It says of the four major categories of personal media, print, is now the least used, lagging well behind television, computers, and radio. It says young adults between the ages of 25 and 34 who are among the most avid net users were reading printed works for a total of just 49 minutes a week in 2008, down a precipitous 29% from 2004. 49 minutes per week. That amounts to about seven minutes per day, of, and leave aside the Bible, I mean. We're talking about just reading in general. You can see why. You can see why not enough people really dig into this message that we offer you freely on thetrumpet.com or on the Key of David. Not enough, not near enough, as it should be, because most just aren't willing to put in the time that it takes to understand the truth of God. And study after study after study, and Mr. Carr points to a number of them in his book, but if you do read and read the news, you see these studies coming out all the time. Even young people, college students, who go off to college, of all things, to study, but as studies show, they, they aren't studying. They aren't digging into their books. They're struggling to get by, or they're relying on shortcuts or others to do the work for them. Many young people come out of college just simply not in the established habit of reading and study. They don't know how to study. And what I'm going to bring up to you at the end of this program is a program that's intended to teach you how to study the Bible. It's a wonderful program, and it really will change your life for the better in so many ways. It brings blessings, as God said in Revelation 1 and in the Proverbs. But we've got to be willing to dig in and then go to work learning how to study God's Word. I want to show you another passage, this one about the Bereans in Acts 17. Acts 17. And uh, verse 10, it says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming there went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the Word. They received the Word with all readiness of mind, and search the scriptures daily, daily, whether those things were so. See, they searched, and they did it day in and day out. Think about your approach to the kinds of things you hear on this program, or the Key of David, or read at the trumpet. Do you go and confirm what's said and look it up yourself in the Bible? The Bible's the world's number one bestseller, but it's also the least read the least studied. You got to go and look it up. What is your approach, your daily approach to Bible study? 
one of the points that Mr. Carr makes in his book is how that all of this new technology, we read the quote there where he said in some cases people have two or three devices in front of them at the same time and how that this is leading to, as his title suggests, a very shallow society, and how that because of the technology and the lights and the flashing advertisements and such, that our, our brains are actually being rewired to be shallow, to lack depth. One short quote from his book, rarely have we paused to ponder, much less question, the media revolution that has been playing out all around us in our homes, our workplaces, our schools. We've got to think about the impact of this revolution. There certainly are some benefits to it. We're sending you this message using technology. That is, it's awesome. It's amazing that that can be done so inexpensively and so quickly. But the drawback, the drawbacks, plural, and there are many, they're taking their toll on this society as we're losing a lot of depth in the art of thinking. We uh, quote from this book in uh, some of our classes here at the college, this by uh, the French philosopher Ernest uh, Demney. He said, if the moment uh, a book or a newspaper raises a question demanding some supplementary information or reflection. We yawn, fidget, or hurriedly do something else. He says, we abhor thinking. If when trying to reflect, we at once feel a weariness, a drowsiness, or a tendency to repeat mere words, we do not know what thought is. He said, if we do know what it is, uh, but as Montaigne says, are too lazy to tackle a problem, with more than a charge or two, we are feeble thinkers. He's describing um, our age today. I mean, this book was written quite a while ago, several decades ago. And where do you suppose we are today? Let's look at the book of Romans. The book of Romans and uh, chapter 12, just one verse over here. But look, our challenge, your challenge, my challenge, given the distractions of our age, given the temptations to be drawn away from what's really important, the challenge for us is to reverse the trend that we see happening in, in society, to reverse that in our own lives, and to make sure that we use the technology wisely, and to make sure that we set aside time, quiet time, for serious study and meditation, for uninterrupted study and meditation, for focused concentration on our Bibles, on our Bible study. That's really what conversion is, is all about in so many ways. Romans uh, 12 here and uh, in verse 2 it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I mean, Mr. Carr in his book's talking about rewiring our brains just in the, the intellectual sense. But Paul is taking this to another level, saying, look, we're here to think like God. We're here to, to act like God. And that requires a miraculous transformation. One translation of this verse says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold. Don't be like everyone else. Don't be like the world. Be like God. You know what the word transformed means. To be changed from one state into another. Upon conversion, am I, I mean, your whole life, your whole attitude, your whole approach to living, it, it transforms. It totally changes. But as Jesus taught us in the parables, not everyone stays with it. I mean, some are inspired by uh, an article, a message, maybe make a few changes for uh, a few weeks, a few months, maybe even a few years. But the history of God's church, as it's discussed there in Revelation 2 and 3, it reminds us that most, most of even God's people fail to endure to the end. Somewhere along the way, they stopped drawing closer to God. They stopped 
studying God's word. They stopped living by every word. They stopped contacting God through prayer. Back to Paul's writings to Timothy, this time 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy and chapter 2. Again, just one verse. There's so many verses in the Bible about studying, about digging in. And yet, really, when you, I mean, just to, to tell you the honest truth, when you think about the, the response levels to programs like this or programs about education and study on the Key of David, they're generally the lowest. It may take a prophetic event or a, a more exciting prophetic-oriented <laughs> booklet to get someone's attention. But what we're talking about here is, I mean, these are the, the basics. This is your bread and butter when it comes to your daily approach to the study of God's Word. As I said at the, st at the start, I mean, this is a dangerous world we're living in, and how ought you to respond to it? Well, I can give you this strong suggestion. With daily Bible study, searching the Scriptures daily, as the Bereans did. This is 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, study to show yourself approved to God. Study to obey God. Study because you love God. You love God's word. You want to get to know him. This isn't about just reading a couple of verses once a week at church. This is about living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And as it happens, this Bible, I mean, this is the word of God in print. And so we want to dig in. We love it. We want to use it. We want to be guided by it. I've read this, been reading this interesting book this summer, How to Read a Book. Just a fascinating study. This is by Mortimer Adler. Uh, a fascinating study on how to be educated, how to learn from books, how to study. He has so much helpful information in there. Well, this correspondence course that we offer to you freely, 36 lessons, this teaches you how to study the Bible. How to study the Bible. Now, you can certainly just read the Bible itself and get a lot out of it. And there's lots of other Bible helps out there, many articles, booklets, and things that we've referred you to in the past. But this, I mean, this is a, an organized, step-by-step, 36-lesson -step, plan that will take you through a study of God's Word. We can't cover everything in those 36 lessons, but there is, there is a strong foundation that will help you to understand the Bible. Just a few of the statements that I've marked in this, this first lesson, lesson one. It says, the Bible is simply God's divine revelation of basic needed knowledge that man is not capable of finding out for himself by any other means. It's divine revelation. We quoted from Revelation, the book at the start, where God says, blessed are you. If you read and if you hear these words, blessed are you. If it's divine revelation from God, does that make it more important than any other written publication or book or article? Of course it does. That's the most important thing you could read. It's the most important subject you could study. It says here on page four of the lesson, we feel the Bible will mean more uh, to you, if you fully understand its vital relation to your life today and its direct connection with current world events, it helps you understand the world that you're living in. It, it, it shows how the Bible is related to you, you individually. One last comment. Here is the book that, in spite of human misunderstanding, has changed more lives than all other books combined. And yet... It's the book that almost no one knows. If you want to know it, if you want to get to know this book, if you want to get to know the God who inspired this book, then you need to contact 
our operators and become a student, an online student, to the Armstrong College Bible Correspondence Course. We send four of these lessons to you um, that you can go through and then take a short test after that before you then turn it in to receive the next four, all the way through to 36 lessons. It's an outstanding study of God's Word. And if you follow through on the instructions put forward there at the start of that course, you will learn how to study the Bible. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time on the Trumpet Daily.